Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to do a cubic regression in your TI Inspire graphing calculator and then use the stored regression equation to predict both X and Y values. So I'm going to show you both types in this video. The first thing that you want to do is you want to take your lists X and Y and plug it into a list and spreadsheet. I've already done that, but I will show you how to get to there on your graphing calculator after I come up with the equation that I'm going to predict for these three values of X and then for one value of Y. All right, let me grab my calculator so that we can start. So I have my calculator, and if I were starting from scratch or didn't already have information, I would open up a new document. But I already have the information in a list in spreadsheets. So you can also select the list in spreadsheets screen from here. So I'm just going to go to my current one that I have because I have my list in spreadsheet. Make sure you name it with something. In this case, I just named it X and Y because there was no context. But you can name your variables whatever you want to to be able to remember them. So if you notice, I already have all of the points that were on my last screen, all these points that I had written down um, plugged in, so you didn't have to watch me type it. After I enter data, I told you it was a cubic regression, but before I pick a cubic regression, I would always look at the scatter plot. And the easiest way to look at your scatter plot is to hit Control and the letter I. This will insert a new screen. And I'm going to add a data and statistics screen. So I'm going to choose option five. I then have to click my variables that I want. So I'm going to click my X and my Y variable. And you can see that there's a clear curve in our pattern. So that's why we want to use a cubic regression. If you wanted to, you could get your equation from this menu by doing menu and option four analyze and then option six regression and show cubic and it will show you that the model goes through all those points very nicely. It's hard to see the whole equation so I'm not going to write it down from this screen. I'm going to go to a calculator screen to do it again. So I'm going to hit control and I and I'm going to go in and I'm going to insert a calculator screen. So I'm going to insert the calculator screen and then I'm going to go to menu and option six statistics. Under option six, I'm going to go to stat calculations and that's where you will find the regression analysis. And we can see that number seven is our cubic regression. So I'm going to choose option seven, cubic regression. It's going to ask you for your variables. Well, we stored our X list into X. We stored our Y list into Y. And notice where it's storing. Right now it's going to store this in F1. So when I go to my graph screen, it will store it in F1. The graph screen is different than the data and statistics screen. So just remember the equation that it, or where they stored it here. So I'm going to click OK. And notice it gives us the regression equation AX cubed plus BX squared plus CX plus D. And then it gives you all of your values. The R squared tells you that 99.96% of the data is explained by this variable. The variable, sorry, 99.96% of the variability of the graph is explained by this model, which means it's a very, very strong graph. The closer this is to one, the stronger your graph is. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write down the equation before I do predictions. So for this, we end up with y equals, if you're in a stats class, you'd put a y hat on it, but most likely if you're doing cubic regression, you don't put a hat on it. So I just rounded to three decimal places for all of them. And hopefully I wrote it down correctly on my paper. Sometimes I make mistakes in these. But this would be your regression equation that you came up with with your graphing calculator. So I just wrote down the 3.11, the negative 6.92, negative 5.3, and I rounded it to 6, and the negative 0 0.974. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to predict for our values. So I'm going to start by predicting for these values here. The nice thing is, is in my calculator, all I have to do is remember where I stored it. So remember that F1 of X that we stored it in? So basically for this one, what I would do is I'm going to type F and 1 parenthesis 1.5. For this one, I'm going to type F and 1 parenthesis 2. And for the last one, I'm going to type F and 1 
negative 0 0.5. So let me go into my calculator, show you how to do this. So you're literally going to um, type what I just wrote. So we're going to do F1. Notice it becomes bold. That's because it's going to use the equation that was stored in F1. And so then we can just plug in our first value, 1.5. Okay, and then do the same thing, F1, parenthesis, the next one was 2, and then we're going to hit F1, parenthesis, and the last one was negative 0.5. So what it did was it plugged all of these values in for X into the equation that we had stored. So negative 12.6, negative 11.9, and negative 0.26755, like depending upon how many decimal places you wanted to write it down, but let me go ahead and write that down. So this one ends up being approximately negative 12.637. This one ends up being approximately negative 11.931. And this one ends up being approximately negative 0.268. So we have our predicted y values for our given x values. So these are all of our y coordinates for these x values here. So the next one, we want to use the model to find which x value or values occur when y equals negative 8. So the easiest way to do this is to go to a graphing screen on your calculator. So let me grab my calculator. I'm going to hit Control and I, and I'm going to insert a graph. So I'm going to go to number 2. Okay, um, it does have me at F4, so I'm gonna go up. Let me just clear out the information that I have in here. I was doing some other stuff before, so let me just clear this out. Okay, and so what I have is it stored the equation in F1, so when I hit enter, it will graph the equation for me. So I can see the graph. It does go below where I would like for it to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to menu, and I'm gonna go to my window, and I'm going to change my window settings to where I can go down a little bit further on my Y min. So I'm just going to go down to negative 15 and see if that's enough. Whoops, it didn't. Hold on, let me delete this. All right, negative 15 for my Y min and click OK. That way I can see the graph a little bit better. Okay, and so if you remember, it said to predict for when Y is negative 8. I'm just going to move this because it's in the way if it will cooperate. All right, let me just move this out of the way. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my graph screen, and to do that, you can hit Control in the letter G, and it will allow you to type in your values, and again, it just keeps putting things back in here that I don't want in here. So in F2, I'm gonna type in negative eight. So I want this one to actually show up this time. So if you notice, it did graph the line F2 equals negative eight. So I wanna find all of these intersection points using my graphing calculator to help me do that. Okay, so we can see that this graph at this particular point intersects the graph in three points. So I would have three X coordinates that correspond to a Y of negative eight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit menu and I'm going to analyze my graph and I'm going to find the intersection point. So the first thing it's going to ask me is the lower bound. That means an X value that is to the left of my first intersection point. And then I'm going to just arrow over to where I can see it. Okay, and I'm just going to grab this. So our first one would be negative 1.16. So the first X value is negative 1.16. Okay, the second X value, and I should put approximately. Let's go to the next one. Okay, if you needed to see it to more decimal places, I can try to get it to show up more decimal places in just one second, but most of the time two should be enough. Okay, if I hit menu, analyze graph, option six, and again, I'm going to go to the intersection this time I want to find the left of the intersection point that I'm going over. So our next value would be 0.834. I'm trying to make it to where you can see that a little bit better. All right. So the second one is 0.834. Let me go back in here. And then for our last one, because we have a third one, I would just do the same process again. So analyze graph, go to the intersection, 
and we can see that it's at 2.34. So for this, remember that what you want to do first, let me just kind of recap, is the first thing you wanna do is enter all of your values into X and Y, see what kind of model that you should use, come up with your equation in the calculator screen, then you could plug in your values for X, and then you can use your graphing screen to help you come up with your values for X for a given Y coordinate. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.